Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm George Bryce, co-president of the CTXA. I'm very excited to be here with you today on this momentous occasion. Today, we'll be joined by several of those that have been involved in its creation. CTX is a very rare disease that is often misdiagnosed and can affect different parts of the body. We're here today to share with you the purposes of the CTXA and what it's all about. It is a privilege of mine to introduce our guests that will tell us more about the, pur the purposes and goals of the CTXA. Our first guest is Chris Rice, Executive Director of the ULF. Welcome, Chris. Thank you, George. Good evening, everyone. The We're happy United to have you here. I'm sorry? We're happy to have you here today. Thank you for joining oh. us, and thank you for the support of the ULF. Now, why don't you go ahead and share with our audience a little bit about the ULF and its support for the CTXA? I will do that. Thank you. The United Leukodystrophy Foundation, or ULF, was formed in 1982 when research on leukodystrophies and clinical support for affected individuals was far more limited than it is today. Through the years, ULF has supported families affected by a range of leukodystrophies, including cerebrotendinous staphylomatosis. We have helped families and patients find doctors. We have held an annual conference that brings researchers and clinicians into a relaxed atmosphere where they can have conversations with patients. CTX families have been a part of the conference for many years. The history of ULF involvement with CTX connects to longtime board member John Wolfe. When John's daughter was diagnosed with CTX, he went looking for information, reviving a dormant Yahoo message board and reaching out to parents and doctors active in, in leukodystrophies. He created enough buzz that ULF President Paula Brazil invited John and his wife Angie to a ULF board meeting in DeKalb. As a result, in 2006, John and Angie Wolf joined the ULF board, ensuring the CTX viewpoint was part of all board decisions, and ULF invested resources in CTX support. Over the next two years, John faced challenges supplying his daughter with the one effective CTX treatment, chinodeoxycholic acid, or CDCA. It was manufactured in Germany, and families in the U.S. bought it from an import company. When the importer closed his operation, John and other families started buying directly from Germany. Then the German manufacturer closed down production. Luckily, ULF's Paula Prezil had, a, had connections in the U.S. and found someone who would produce a supply for CTX families. Greater stability came when Retrofin, which is now Trevere, started producing CDCA. ULF held two CDX-specific meetings over the years, bringing together families and doctors. In 2017, the ULF expanded its annual family conference, holding a number of sessions on specific leukodystrophies. And from the start, CTX families had a session. This formalized the annual sharing and discussions. It also demonstrated the depth of the CTX community and potential for further action. By 2020, discussions had begun about the potential for a patient-focused drug development meeting on CTX. This PFDD meeting would give those affected by CTX a chance to share their stories with the U.S. Food and Drug Administration in a four-hour meeting and follow up with a printed report. This would be a giant step forward in advocacy for the CTX community. But was it enough? Should there be a patient advocacy group focused solely on CTX? Discussions with families led to the conclusion that a new nonprofit should be formed. So in 2021, with the generous support of Trevere Therapeutics and additional support from Leedy and Biosciences, the ULF embarked on this two-pronged approach to support the voice of CTX families. Happily, ULF had a relationship with Gene Pickford, who took on the job of bringing together CTX leaders and helped them form the CTX Alliance. The result is the active group that puts on this meeting tonight. In a few minutes, you'll learn more about the PFDD meeting from Bob Rauner. I congratulate the CTX Alliance for moving forward to educate and advocate, and I welcome opportunities to work with them in the future. There's much to be done, starting with earlier diagnosis and newborn screening. 
I see ULF working with CTXA to achieve these and many goals beyond. Thank you all for listening to my bit of history. Back to you, George. I want to let everybody know if you have not yet visited our website, you should do so because it has a lot of valuable information on patient support, research and science, advocacy, and much more. The website address is ctxalliance.org. Now, I'd like to inter introduce our next guest, Bobby Blanchard, who is the co-president, along with myself, of the CTX Alliance. Welcome, Bobby. Thanks for joining us. Hi, George. Thank you. The floor is now yours. Sounds good. Um, as George mentioned, my name is Bobby Blanchard, um, and I have been involved in the CTX community for about uh, six years now when two of our three children were diagnosed with CTX. Um, and there they are. We um, have been involved. Thankfully, we're really grateful for the ULF. We've been to a couple conferences there and we're able to connect with people as well as over at Hunter's Hope. Um, so my oldest son, um, Jordan, has CTX, and our middle daughter, Joelle, has CTX, and our little one, Jace, is unaffected. Um, obviously, this has um, motivated us to help and be involved in the CTX community, and one of the first things that we did was create a Facebook um, group for support. So you may <laughs> recognize me from that. Um, and as Chris mentioned, we were looking at, um, we started to hear information about the possibility of a special, special group um, nonprofit just for CTX. And so when we heard about that, um, we decided that it would be something we would want to be involved with. When the survey went out, there were a lot of things that came up on the minds of um, CTX patients and their caregivers that were also on our mind a lot as well. And across the board, we kept hearing the need for more education, earlier diagnosis, um, advocacy for newborn screening, finding CTX patients earlier so they can be treated in time um, to have better clinical outcomes, and then more um, therapy options for symptoms for CTX patients. We also looked at um, advocacy kept coming up over and over again, especially the concerns about um, CDCA not having um, FDA approval um, and just the concerns that we have about the accessibility to, to that in the future then. Um, community, we had a small community on Facebook, um, but we did feel that um, having you, having um, a group dedicated just to the unique and specific patient needs of CTX would be a benefit to our community and would help grow our community. Resources were another, another big thing on everybody's mind. Having a central location to find information, especially when you're newly diagnosed, um, is something that people really had struggled with. Finding the right laboratories for testing um, and resources on the how to obtain information um, medication in the first place and what that process looked like. As we all know, it is not running down to your pharmacy and picking up Tylenol. So after looking at all of those things, we decided that there would be benefit added and there were many people that came together to be get involved and the ULF was amazing in helping us um, through the process of creating the CTX Alliance. And we were official on July 15th of 2021. Right away, we created our mission and purpose statements. Our mission is to support, educate, and provide a voice for CTX patients and their caregivers as we work toward a cure. The things that we want to be able to do are things that we talked about um, just now. We want to provide education, support, and adv advocacy while promoting research for patients affected with CTX, their families and medical professionals who treat and study this rare disease. And these are all of the people 
who felt um, called to join that effort and who are a, a lot, part of a lot of those initial talks about creating the CTXA. You met myself and George, but we also have um, Andrea DeBarber. She might be a familiar face for you. Um, she's our co-vice president. Um, next there is Shannon, and she is a parent advocate. We have Sean, Lori, she is our treasurer. Neil is our secretary. Ollie is a CTX patient. Um, Dr. Steiner is the other co-vice president. Sue Stewart is a parent advocate. And this should probably be a familiar face to those of you who have been in the CTX world for a while now. Um, Mr. John Wolf, uh, one of the in pioneering uh, parent advocates. And then you also um, were introduced to Mr. Chris Rice, who is our adv advisor um, as the ULF executive director. Now we're also, um, we have amazing team for our medical advisory board. This isn't something that always comes together right away for new nonprofits like us. But so we have been really, really gifted now. Um, there will be no written test or anything. This is all information that you can find, find on the website. Um, so I'm not going to go through their full bio, bios for you, but I assure you that they are incredibly intelligent, um, committed, and compassionate medical professionals who are, who are um, we are just blessed to have them helping out the CTX community. You'll see um, Andrea DeBarber and Dr. Steiner, we've got some little stars on there. Um, they are also on our board, so they help us to communicate needs back and forth. Um, which is a huge help for us. Um, Dr. DeBarber is at OHSU. Um, Dr. Eichler is at Mass General. Um, Dr. Larson is at the University of Colorado. Dr. Rizzo is um, at the University of Nebraska. Dr. Steiner is at the University of Wisconsin. And Dr. Wishart is also at M Mass General in Sp Spalding, Charleston, and Salem. Um, a lot of these um, people have been involved in the CTX community for a long time um, and so have had long-term commitment both through the ULF and through Hunter's Hope and um, a lot of other ways to help our CTX community. So we're really excited to have them. Now just taking a look, the next thing we did right away was to come up with some goals for the CTXA. What are the things we want to accomplish right away? What things do we think are really important? So our short-term goals were to create a, a website and, and start gathering information. And you've heard us mention it a couple of times. It's already out there and live and it's amazing. And I encourage you to check it out. Also a social media presence. We've expanded that to include all sorts of social media. Um, Jean has been amazing on getting us going on all of that, um, hopefully finding more patients and finding more caregivers and directing them um, to places where they can get more information. We also right away wanted to look at a CTX specific session at the ULF conference this year and we are in the works for that and hoping that you can join us for that. Looking forward, our midterm goals are to raise global awareness. Um, Obviously, we know that CTX is massively underdiagnosed. Um, one of the things that was brought up to try and do that was to add the, the CYP27A1 gene to the clinical and research genetic testing panels. And again, trying to find those patients that are undiagnosed. What has come up often and regularly lately that seems to be over, have been overlooked in the past is the psychiatric and mental health aspect um, that affects not only CTX patients, but obviously um, they're caregivers. And so that's something we want to try to bring more attention to and address and, and possibly um, push for some research in that area. Our long-term goals for uh, the CTXA include the trying to get that FDA approval um, for the CBCA, um, working more towards newborn screening, which Andrea will share more about that, um, and always, a cure. And the more we learn about CTX, the closer we're going to get. Now, 
if any of that sounds like something you would want to be involved in, we would strongly encourage you, patients, relatives, friends, physicians, healthcare providers, um, anyone in the industry, pharma, leukodystrophy patient groups, anybody who would want to be part of this movement, please get in touch, register with us, and, um, and get involved. Um, the website there again is ctxalliance.org. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or um, there is our, our Jean Pickford, um, who was crucial in getting all of us set up and moving. So she would love to have more people to help her do that. So, um, and now I think that's all I had, and I'll hand you back over to George now. Great. You had a lot of valuable information there. It can be very helpful for everybody that's involved with uh, CTX. Um, and all you listeners out there, um, hey, if you've not joined the mailing list yet, you can do so right after the tonight's webinar by visiting our website. So as soon as we're done, go to the website and sign up. Uh, next up, please join me in welcoming Bob Browner, the president of the United Liquid Lu 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 excuse me, Luca Distrospe Foundation. Hi, Bob, and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us this evening. Well, thanks, Georgia, for the introduction. It's great to be here to share with the families. I know you have some important news to share with us tonight, so please go ahead. All right, well, I appreciate that. I uh, kind of wanted to do a quick little tie into Bobby, which he was talking about. Our registration is open for the, our conference in June, so head to our website and get yourself signed up and uh, get your hotel room. So my role today is to welcome the introduction of the Voice of the Patient Report. And for those that might not know me, my name is Bob Rauner, and I get the honor of sharing this report with everyone in attendance here today and with those that will watch the video replay down the road. This, uh, patient-focused drug development meeting with the FDA was held last September. So this meeting was obviously a culmination of nine months of planning and collaboration by the patient advocacy groups that facilitated this meeting. The unlocked CTX patient-focused drug development meeting for CTX was one of the first opportunities for CTX patients and family members to share their lived experience with the broader medical and regulatory community. This was truly a milestone for our community. It also served as a testament to the power of the individual patient advocacy groups to come together to benefit our disease community. Our patient families, they brought their voices to help us better understand their experiences, their struggles, and their hopes. Courageous panelists put their energy into action and made a choice to share their perspective of certainty amidst a path of frequent uncertainty. Uh, our next slide is a slide that it's, I feel important to recognize all the community presenters that we had for this meeting. So I wanna make sure that I recognize Estefania, Bobby, George, Shannon, Everill, Kay, Narander, Robin, Thomas, Dr. Larson, Sean, Sean, Sagna, Holly, Dr. Steiner, Sue Stewart, John Wolf, and Catherine Zonsky. Uh, we couldn't have done it without all of your input into this meeting. So we really uh, felt that everybody needed to know who you were. So thank all of you for your input uh, to this meeting. Uh, next thing I wanna introduce you to is the table of contents uh, to this. Uh, this report is a 32 page report. So it's got a lot of information and I'm not gonna give you all the information, but what I'm gonna do is just give you a short overview of the topics that are being covered in this report. So, the first part of the report is talking about symptoms and impacts that matter most to patients and their families. One of the key areas is detecting and diagnosing CTX. Uh, symptoms experienced. There are a large variety of symptoms, so each of this section is broke down in different symptoms and very well done. 
The next is, what are the impacts of CTX on individuals that have CTX? Because that's obviously a great uh, burden for the families. And then we move to the impacts of CTX on the families themselves. So it's it's been a very challenging area to say the least. So the next section is talking about the current and future approaches to treating CTX. What therapies are used to treat CTX? Then we'll cover the downsides and burdens of current therapies. You know, what's, what's, what works, what's, uh, what are the challenges? And then the last part is called the treatment outcomes desired and the unmet needs. So this really um, gives us a good idea of what this group felt and the input that we got from all the other people as well. So it's been a, it's a great report and I hope uh, it's probably one of the best done reports that I've seen. So that's really good. I had to kind of throw, I found one of the pictures of the group uh, from a highlight there. And of course you, you have Bobby, Dr. Steiner, Estefania and George, Neil, and Kim with Ken, Kith Collective, who was our main person with uh, that directed this whole process. So it was really a very positive meeting, and it was so well run. It was it was easy for us to just uh, go with the flow. So they were great people. So so the next slide here is uh, just kind of a quick overview of fun facts that uh, showed up as we worked through this whole process. We had 92 participants that were live. So basically it worked out as a third of those were life science company and staff people. One third were FDA staff, physicians, researchers, and rare disease advocates. And the other one third were people that, who lived the experience. And that's probably the big key. So this is, meeting is the first of its kind meeting for the community and it's itself is a source of hope for the future. Uh, key theme from the meeting was how much the participants learn from one another. And that also applied to uh, industry people. Uh, there were things that were brought up that they didn't uh, know or realize what was going on. So it really opened their eyes. Uh, it also kind of helped the CTX people feel less alone about their individual experiences. So that's that was really important. So, and last of all, uh, one of the participants made the statement, uh, there's still so much that we need to do and understand about CTX. So people like me and people still early in their journey don't have to stumble in the same darkness that I had. And so I thought that uh, really was an important piece of the overall puzzle. So you kind of go to one where you have themes of you're not alone. This is what it stands for. Uh, next slide are acknowledgements. There are so many people that need to be acknowledged, but this group here with their direct involvement uh, with the production was really good. So we really appreciate it. All the individuals that have enhanced enhance the uh, Unlock CTX initiative. So obviously all the members who participated in the me meeting through recorded sessions, live on camera remarks, uh, comments provided by telephone, uh, written comments submitted before, during, and after the meeting. I especially want to thank John Dudley, Eric Quigley, and Kyle Roderick of Digitally, Di Dudley Digital Works for creative and technical services to broadcast the PFD meeting live and preserve it for later on demand viewing. <clears throat> William Llewellyn is with the FDA's Office of Strategic Initiatives, Center for Drug Evaluation and Research. He provided counsel and encouragement throughout the entire process of the meeting and planning and then also the follow-up. Uh, special thank you to Keely Mata and Chris Rice of the United Luke District Foundation for their support with initiative outreach, planning, communications, and editorial review of this report. Samantha Mayberry of the Kith Collective. She was responsible for content development, meeting planning, 
meeting uh, uh, and report preparation, communications for the initiative, and interacting with the community members calling in during the Unlock CTX meeting. Kim McCleary of Kith Collective, her initiative, innovative and initiative strategy, content development, speaker preparation, meeting moderation, and principal authorship of this report. She was the guiding force to make this happen. Neil Dara of the CTX Alliance for his support of content development and also for co-facilitating the Unlock CTX meeting. Uh, Gene Pickford of Pickpoint LLC for assistance in connecting with the founding members of the CTX Alliance and additional meeting support. Uh, Judah Rathjens of Hello Brand for the design of the Unlock CTX logo and production of other creative materials, including this report. Uh, myself uh, is acknowledged in here from the foundation for initiating the project on behalf of the CTX community, and guiding its successful execution and seeing it through to its fruition. And obviously the last ones are the members of the CTX Alliance Board of Directors for supporting the initiative and meeting content development and the review of this report. So last but not least, uh, this group here is the most uh, important. Our rare disease partner organizations, LHTLC, CTX Alliance, European Leukodystrophy Association, Hunter's Hope, Leukodystrophy Australia, Leukodystrophy Resource and Research Organization, and the Spanish CTX uh, Association. Your partnership has been wonderful and it, it went a long ways to making sure that we could make this event happen. Last but not least, we want to especially thank our generous sponsors, Trevere Therapeutics, Lydian Biosciences. Your grants have made this event possible and without your unrestricted su support, uh, we wouldn't be able to come off of this meeting. So this has really been a blessing and I hope that all of you enjoy the, this report that has come out and I know it's gonna be a win for you. Um, I guess, thanks for your time and I will turn this meeting back to George. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Thanks for the voice of the patient report was very valuable on many levels. I'd love to hear how much the patients learn from each other at the meetings and how it's helped them feel less alone. We can all use that kind of support. Thank you again for joining us. All right. Well, it's my pleasure to be part of the webinar. Thanks, George. Joining us next is David McGuire. He is the Associate Director of Client and Delivery Excellence of at Eversana. Welcome, David. Hi, George. Great to be with you here today. David, I know you're going to share with us some information about Kenadol. So please go ahead and take it away. Thanks again, George. So hi, everyone. As George mentioned, my name is David McGuire. I'm the program director for the Keenan et al. Total Care Hub. And today I just wanted to take some time to share with you all um, the services that we provide for patients that are prescribed to Keenan et al. to treat their disease and um, how we operate specifically for the patients. So um, here at the Keenan et al. Total Care Hub, not only do we perform the uh, patient services hub, but we also are the uh, full dispensing pharmacy for the medication Kenadol. So our team here works day in and day out to ensure that patients that are on and prescribed for Kenadol medication receive their medication every month uh, according to when they're supposed to be due for their shipment. Um, so a patient service coordinator is part of our staff and that individual reaches out to our patients each and every month to coordinate their shipment for what works best for them. Here at the hub, we're able to ship to patients overnight directly with FedEx to your home door, okay? So you don't have to worry about going to get the pharmacy uh, down the street to get your medication. We get this directly to you. We're really compassionate here about patient services and taking as much of the load of the services that we can on behalf of those patients. Uh, the patient services support also includes reaching out to the doctor's offices to obtain RX refills. So whenever your prescription has been exhausted or if it becomes expired, we work directly with the doctor's offices to get a brand new prescription order to avoid any gap in therapy for the patient. 
Um, also really building that trust and relationship with the patient. Our team here, it really trust is a big one for us. It's communication. We wanna make sure that we have the ability to consistently provide excellent service to the patients that we serve, um, ensuring that their medication and therapy is moving forward in a positive direction. Um, reimbursement specialists here at the Hub are also a very big part of what we perform for the patient. When it comes to reimbursement situations and issues, insurance plans will sometimes require prior authorizations for the medication, specifically Kenadol. And our team of experts really work through those each and every day, every month, every year to help the doctor's offices navigate the prior authorization process to get the approvals at the insurance plan specific to the patient to ensure timely and effective delivery of their medication, again, without delays if possible. Um, we also have appeals nursing team to support if there were to be any issues with a prior authorization being denied with the insurance plan, we work together with the doctor's offices to pursue an appeal of that decision when it's of course medically necessary and we can of course go down that path. So our team is ready and willing to assist alongside the doctor's offices. Also assisting with copay and um, any sort of out-of-pocket cost for patients. Uh, insurance plans, respectively are gonna be individually unique for patients and there will be times where a copay expense is um, to going to the patient's side and we have multiple different ways in which we are able to assist the patients to avoid any cost out of pocket for the patient and keep it as little as possible. Um, our team also has direct opportunities to work for patient assistance programs that patients may qualify for, again, all in the interest of keeping access to medication open and fluid. Um, as I mentioned, we are the full dispensing pharmacy for the Kenadol medication. We're the only pharmacy in the country. So we ship to all uh, United States locations, all states and territories. Um, again, I mentioned we ship overnight via FedEx. So we give you a call and you tell us when it's gonna work best for you. We'll get it over to you immediately. Uh, also, what's really nice is we have a full pharmacy staff here on uh, accessible, I should say, to all of our patients 24 seven on call. Uh, it's really important and it's a great way for a patient to be able to ask any questions they may have around their medication. Anything comes up, you're able to reach out and speak to one of our pharmacists directly. And again, they are experts as well because we deal with all of these patients um, when we're talking through the Kenadol medication. And then lastly, again, I mentioned communication. This is a really big part for us. Being able to connect with our patients in the way that they see bit, best fit, uh, whether it's through text messaging, that digital connection, we can send emails for delivery coordination. Of course, we can also jump on the phone and, and reach out to the patients. A lot of our team members uh, build relationship with patients through the phone call and coordination of shipments that we have each and every month. Uh, you hear from your dedicated patient service coordinator to get your shipment. So um, I really hope this information today helps kind of shed some light here as to how we operate with the Kenadol Total Care Hub. And, and our main goal is to really assist patients and be along the journey. Um, for your therapy. And George, I'm going to send it back over to you. David, uh, from personal experience, I have to tell you that the, uh, your team does a phenomenal job, and I do appreciate uh, you giving us that overview on the uh, Kenadol Total Care Hub and how it works. That was wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, George, and I appreciate it. Go ahead. Thank you very much for your time. You bet. Our next presenter this evening is Dr. Robert Steiner, who is the co-vice president of the CTX Alliance. He is going to share with us some exciting news about the upcoming ULF family, family conference and CTX meetings, which is just two months away. Dr. Steiner, welcome. Thank you, George. It's great to be here today. I'm really looking forward to this upcoming conference. Can you please tell us about it? Absolutely, I'd love to. So you've heard earlier in the webinar uh, today a little bit about the upcoming ULF Family Conference and maybe just brief mention of the CTX meeting. So I'd like to provide some more details. The 2022 Family Conference for the United Leukodystrophy Foundation is coming up in June. Specifically, join us at the Eaglewood Resort and Spa on Friday and Saturday, June 24th and June 25th for this very important conference. Uh, registration just opened this week. 
And you'll be very pleased to know that the ULF Family Conference is back in person. So we're thrilled to be hosting at the Eaglewood Resort and Spa again this year and cannot wait to see you. We talked about registration opening this week and updates will be posted on this page as plans to finalize the information about this year's event become available. So continue to check back regularly. Next slide. This will be a two-day event, the ULF meeting. Arrivals Thursday, June 23rd, with departures on Sunday, June 26th. This is an annual event where affected families can access the world's top leukodystrophy physicians and researchers. The ULF meeting provides the latest scientific information to keep families informed on advances in the field. And the conference guides families on topics that will improve their overall quality of life while living with a leukodystrophy. Next slide. These meetings have proved to be an invaluable experience for the whole family, as well as affected individuals, parents and caregivers, spouses, siblings, extended family, friends, and anyone else in the support network. The cost to attend is $25 per adult and $10 per child under the age of 18, but note that scholarships are available to families who are newly diagnosed or are in financial need. This fee cover covers not only entry to the event, but also eight meals provided at the venue. Attendees are responsible for securing their hotel rooms and making their own travel arrangements. Now you've heard about the CTX uh, Alliance uh, during the, tonight's webinar and you know what their mission is. I won't repeat it here, but if we go to the next slide, I'm very pleased to announce um, that the CTX Alliance will be meeting uh, along with the ULF. Again, I won't belabor uh, the details of all the things that the CTX Alliance is doing and plans to do. You've heard about that from Bobby Blanchard earlier, but just to reiterate that the Alliance is involved in education, access, and it's a centralized hub for information. As far as education, we're interested in earlier diagnosis, better outcomes, and improved quality of life. With access, you've heard that there's not currently an FDA approved treatment specifically approved for CTX, and we want that to change. There's access to the medication now, but what happens when and if it goes away? The CTX Alliance wants to take a proactive approach to trying to ensure that, that the supply never does go away. And finally, the hub provides a dedicated space and place for CTX patients and their families. How many patients are not diagnosed? Or how many are diagnosed but don't know about ULF or the CTXA? We're trying to change that. The incidence of CTX is supposed to be about one in 50,000 individuals, and that would predict there's over 6,000 individuals in the United States. But the number currently receiving treatment is at least an order of magnitude less than that. Next slide. So here are the details of the exciting CTX family session hosted by the CTX Alliance at the ULF meeting, June 23rd, 2022. And just to go over the agenda briefly, introductions and welcomes will come from Jean Pickford, our CTXA Executive Director, along with Andrew DeBarber, Chair of the CTXA Board and CTXA Medical and Scientific Advisory Board. This will be followed by an by, uh, with an overview of CTX, looking at the biochemical basis, diagnosis, clinical symptoms, and treatment of CTX given by Bart Duell from the Oregon Health and Science University. Brian Wishart from Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital, Mass General Hospital for Children at Harvard Medical School will provide the next talk, a literature review on functional and symptomatic management in CTX. Next, Penelope Bonin from Baylor College of Medicine will speak to evidence to support similar progression of CTX within families. And Sapora Felix Sakai, MD, head of the Institute of Human Genetics at the Galilee Medical Center in Israel will present on 
chenodeoxycholic acid therapy in CTX patients during pregnancy, a topic of great interest. This will be followed by Austin Larson from the University of Colorado presenting another systematic evidence review. This one on a different topic, however, lessons for implementation of newborn screening for CTX, diagnosis and management of newborns with CTX. Then another international speaker, Frederick Vaz from Amsterdam, will speak on the results of a pilot study screening 20,000 newborns for CTX and progress towards adding CTX to the Dutch newborn screening panel. Finally, Joe Orsini from the New York State Newborn Screening Laboratory will give an exciting update on the prospective pilot study screening of New York State newborns for CTX. And there will be a closed lunch for CTX family session attendees uh, and an in-person session. So thank you very much. And I hope to see you all at this exciting meeting. Now, as you've heard, um, you can register for it using the link on the screen. Please join us. It's going to be a great event. You're going to learn a lot and meet a lot of great people. Thank you again, Dr. Steiner, for uh, joining us this evening. Our final presenter this evening is Dr. Andrea DeBarber, who is the co-vice president of the CTX Alliance. She is going to discuss with us the efforts that are being made towards newborn screening for CTX. Welcome, Dr. DeBarber. Hi, George. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. I know the uh, efforts that you and so many others are making are so important. So can you please give us an update on that? Yes. So today I will provide an update on nomination of CTX for consideration for addition to the RUSP. And the RUSP is the recommended uniform screening panel of disorders to screen for in newborns. So first I would like to provide a timeline for progress towards nomination of CTX for consideration for addition to the RUSP. So back in 2014, it was first demonstrated that newborn dried blood spots could be screened for disease using a biomarker for CTX. And in 2016, a meeting was hosted by the United, United Leukodystrophy Foundation to discuss submitting a CTX nomination for consideration for addition to the RUSP. In 2017, uh, it was demonstrated by Dr. Frederick Vaz and colleagues that newborn dried blood spot screening for CTX could be improved using additional CTX biomarkers. And in August 2018, a nomination was submitted to the Advisory Committee on Heritable Disorders in Newborns and Children for consideration of CTX for addition to the RUSP. Around this same time, the chemical identity of the primary bile tetral glucuronide CTX biomarker in newborn dried blood spots was confirmed by comparison against authentic reference standard that was synthesized in collaboration with Trevair Therapeutics. The reference standard and the method internal standard are critical components required to perform newborn screening for CTX, and they have been made available to other researchers who are developing and validating newborn screening for CTX. In 2019, uh, sorry, in 2018, the Advisory Committee on Heritable Disorders in Newborns and Children had an in-person meeting in Rockville, Maryland. Um, where the CTX nomination was discussed and feedback provided that additional supporting evidence was required by the committee and that the nomination would be tabled until additional evidence can be provided. So the CTX Newborn Screening Task Force has come together to generate the CTX nomination package for resubmission. And the task force consists of myself as the lead scientist and Dr. Steiner and Jean Pickford on behalf of the CTXA as co-leads for the nomination. And Drs. Larson, Bonin, Gelb, Felix Akai, Vaz, Huda Cooper and other CT experts as part of the CTX newborn screening task force. And I'm very thankful to the ULF that is supporting us to hold our first in-person meeting as part of the ULF annual meeting in June. The goals of the task force will be to address the advisory committee responses for the first CTX nomination package, 
using supporting data that has been generated since the first package was submitted or is in the process of being generated, and also to evaluate if additional supporting evidence still needs to be generated, and if so, to determine how this can best be accomplished. So in addition to the feedback provided by the advisory committee at the in-person meeting, they also provided written feedback for the first CTX nomination package. For the remainder of the presentation, I would like to summarize the responses of the advisory committee and their requests for additional information. For the following key questions, the committee agreed sufficient evidence was provided. Is the nominated condition medically serious? Yes. Is there a widely available CLIA and or FDA approved confirmatory test diagnostic process? Yes. Are there defined treatment protocols? Yes. Specifically, the committee recognized CTX as a medically serious condition that deserves thorough consideration. It was also concluded that there is a clear approved confirmatory test for CTX and that a treatment is available through an orphan drug designation by the FDA of chenodeoxycholic acid and that there are defined treatment protocols. For the following key question, the committee requires additional supporting evidence. Are prospective pilot data from population-based assessments available for this disorder? The committee uh, indicated that they will require additional information. They require at least one CTX case must be prospectively identified through a newborn screening system. Oh. Specifically, um, from the um, newborn needs to be identified from pilot studies involving population-based screening of identifiable newborns. At least one screen positive newborn needs to be identified with confirmation of presence of CTX. The population included in the pilot study should be similar to the US population, in particular with respect to the known prevalence of CTX. But this information is not available yet, but studies are currently being performed that we hope will lead to prospective identification of at least one CTX case through a newborn screening system. Screen Plus is a voluntary newborn screening research study where babies are screened for an additional 14 rare disorders, including CTX, that are not currently on New York's routine newborn screening panel. This project is led by Dr. Melissa Wasserstein and the Screen Plus Coordinating Center at the Albert Einstein College of Med Medicine and the Children's Hospital at Montefiore. The study is supported by the National Institutes of Health and industry and advocacy sponsors and is being done in conjunction with the New York State Department of Health. And Dr. Joseph Orsini from the New York State Department of Health will be providing an update on the Screen Plus study at the CTX uh, meeting in June that was discussed by Dr. Steiner. Another study is being performed in the Netherlands. Um, this is a screening, uh, the Health Council of the Netherlands issued in 2015 an advisory report to the Minister of Health entitled Neonatal Screening New Recommendations. In this report, the committee classified CTX as a category 2A condition where neonatal screening may prevent significant irreparable damage, but for which no good test methods are available that have been tested within the neonatal screening setting. The committee recommended encouragement of a pilot study of a previously developed screening method. This is the screening methodology developed by Dr. Frederick Vaz who has now completed the requested pilot study screening 20,000 Dutch newborns for CTX. Dr. Vaz will also be providing an update on the pilot study and progress towards adding CTX to the Dutch newborn screening program at the CTX meeting in June. If CTX is added to the Dutch newborn screening program, this could also provide data on positive identification of at least one CTX case through a newborn screening system. The committee also requires additional supporting evidence for the following key questions. Does the screening test have established analytical validity? 
and are the characteristics of the screening test reasonable for the newborn screening system? Specifically, uh, data should be available on the analytical validation of one or more of the screening modalities being proposed for use in population-based screening. It is also helpful to identify whether the screening methodology could be multiplexed and if the screening method could potentially identify conditions other than the nominated condition. Some additional test validation information is, is available since the first nomination. For example, it was demonstrated in 2020 by Dr. Michael Gelb's group that 32,000 de-identified Washington State newborn dried blood spots could be screened for CTX with a 0% false positive rate. One de-identified CTX positive um, dried blood spot was identified as part of this study with CYP27A1 gene sequencing confirming two known pathogenic variants. Additional test validation information will be generated as part of the Dutch pilot study and the Screen Plus pilot study. The committee also requires additional supporting evidence for the following key question. Is the case definition and the spectrum of the condition well described to help predict the phenotypic range of those children who will be identified based on population-based screening? Specifically, the, the committee required clarification regarding what is considered a true positive CTX case, include relevant biomarkers if applicable, provide references or documentation of consensus amongst experts in the field. Although the most serious phenotypes are clear, the progression of other phenotypes is uncertain due to limited data. If additional data are available on the spectrum of CTX, please include. Some additional information is available since the first nomination. For example, an expert opinion was published recently on diagnosing, treating and managing patients with CTX. This consensus opinion was written by CTX experts from around the world. Some additional information is also available on the spectrum of CTX. For example, Stelton et colleagues published, uh, described CTX without neurological involvement. Genzel et colleagues also described uh, familial variability of CTX lacking typical biochemical findings. Next slide, please. The committee also requires additional supporting evidence for the following key questions. Do the results have clinical utility? If the spectrum of the disease is broad, will the screening and or diagnostic test identify who is most likely to benefit from treatment? I.e. could more serious or milder phenotypes be identified that may require different clinical management, especially if the treatment is onerous or risky? Specifically, the committee is interested in understanding how screening can inform treatment and early treatment can impact health outcomes. If there are data available that describes the impact of early identification through screening, please provide. Some additional information is also available since the first nomination. For example, Dr. Felix Akai, who will also be speaking at the CTX meeting in June, and is a member of the CTX Newborn Screening Task Force, is working to publish her data generated as part of a prenatal genetic screening program in Northern Israel, entitled Identification of CTX at Birth Leads to Better Health Outcomes, a 13-year experience in Northern Israel. Next slide. And please move the slide forward to the photo. Thank you. And so um, I wanted to conclude the presentation by showing a picture of the group that attended the 2018 in-person advisory committee meeting. And you see here myself and Dr. Steiner and the many CTX patient and family representatives who attended, John Wolfe, Susan Stewart, Kent and Donna Richter, and also Bob Rauner, the ULF president, who all traveled to Rockville, Maryland, 
uh, to attend the meeting and provide public comment. And so I would like to thank you, thank everyone who has supported the submission of the CTX Rust nomination so far. This really has been a team effort. And Dr. Steiner and I are excited to be working with the CTX Newborn Screening Task Force on the nomination resubmission and thankful for the continued support of CTX patients and families and patient advocacy groups, including the CTXA, the ULF and Hunter's Hope. So with that, I will hand back to George. Thank you, Dr. DeBarber. We uh, sure do appreciate that. That was extraordinary, no doubt, very time consuming. Please keep it up and thank you so much. Happy, happy to do it, happy to be here. After all those great uh, presentations and all that great information, we'll now like to turn uh, the time over to you for questions and answers. Uh, let's take the first question. This one is for uh, Dr. Steiner. Um, do you know how many CTX patients also have autism? Well, I know there's at least one because I've seen such a patient. Uh, and uh, I know there's a handful more because there's been at least one publication reporting additional patients with CTX and autism. I think this is an unexplored area. I think if we looked more systematically, we'd find a lot of people with CTX who also have autism. So the best I can tell you, I can't give you a number, but I can tell you it's not uncommon for people with CTX to also have autism. Wow. How, um, Bobby, this one's for you. How do I know what to expect for the future for my boys who have CTX? We ask ourselves that question a lot in our house. Um, I think that we, um, children now treated young, I think they have a much better chance for, for a good outcome, you know, a better quality of life than what CTX patients have experienced in the past. But I think it's really an unknown area because we haven't had kids treated so young before a lot of, um, uh, of things have happened in, to cause um, damage to their brains or, or nerves and the tendons and things. So I think if we, it, it, it is an unknown and I don't think we're going to know until we, until we move along here. Well, thank you very much. Now we have about three more questions. Um, this one here is for uh, Dr. DeBarber. Uh, can you briefly explain how a CDCA works in the body? Is it, is it replacing the enzyme that we're missing? Yes, so normally the normal function of CDA is to turn down the production of the bile acid pathway. And because CDCA is missing in CTX, this pathway is upregulated and um, all, a number of intermediates uh, accumulate, for example, cholesterol, which is tested in the plasma cholesterol. And so when the chenodeoxycholic acid is provided as a treatment, this turns down this pathway and stops production of all these potentially toxic intermediates and is also associated with a much improved clinical outcome. Okay, thank you. The next question, I'll uh, give it to Dr. Steiner. Uh, how or where do I find a doctor who has knowledge about treating CTX? So there is an early effort between uh, the CTXA and the CTXA Medical and Scientific Advisory Board to begin identifying such professionals. We have begun that work. So what I would say at this point is contact us and we can help you find a doctor experienced in C CTX uh, management. Thank you. These have been great questions. Um, how about Dr. DeBarber? Um, I don't have an official diagnosis and I need help in figuring out how to get diagnosed. Where do I go? Um, well, there is actually a, a free to the patient uh, testing program if you're, um, that your physician uh, will need to um, submit the sample. And actually, there's information about this on the CTX Alliance website. 
So, um, you know, please uh, work with your physician and uh, you can find the information uh, on, on the website for the for testing um, if the, uh, there is a, if this is a potential uh, CTX diagnosis. Thank you so much. These have been wonderful questions. Um, we sure do appreciate everybody that's taken part in this, uh, in this webinar this evening and for all the valuable information that has been shared. We want to thank each and every one of you and all of our presenters this evening for the great information. Uh, like I said that you had shared, I also want to thank each of you for watching at home, for joining us as well. Please remember our website. Sign up for our mailing list and register for the conference in June. Thank you for your support of the CTX Alliance and take care. Well, everybody, I guess that's a wrap for uh, 2022 CTX Spring Conference or, or Spring Webinar. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>